Robin Slim, we are back. Peter, are you there? Yep, how's it going, guys? Good. What's going on, man? Peter Ramal Leotis, right? Rumel Leotis, that was close. Cool, cool. Some I'm people trying. have butchered that name in the past, guys. It's been crazy. <laughs> I feel I've you, bro. Like, I've gotten like Ramalitis. I've gotten like Romeo Lola Lotus. It's like, where's the five L's? You know what I mean? What are you talking about? Romeo Leotis. Romeo Leotis. It's like Yotis. And in high school, you know, because you know how lovely people are in high school. Yeah. They used to joke around my name and call me Peter Romeo Eats Lettuce. Like, <laughs> Super clever. How creative. They got you good. Yeah, dude, they burned. I know. <laughs> what uh you're you're uh, a publicist? So I do I do I do a lot of stuff. Um I mean uh I do a lot of like digital media marketing and social media and like the kind of like the sports and uh, entertainment world and I've, yeah I do pub uh, pu publicity stuff and PR on the side as well cool. um, and I've uh, been doing that with athletes to start but then I've kind of shifted more towards uh, a lot of actors and a lot of uh, actors that have web shows or TV shows have been kind of uh, uh, messaging me to kind of help them you know get on podcasts get like uh, internet coverage and like for example, I did a bit of work with uh, Katie and Trish from My Roommates at Escort, who we had on your show. And that yeah. was an awesome interview. Thank you, dude. Thank you. They were they were great. They were fun. Yeah, no, they were they that that show is uh, really taken off online. So yeah. it's uh, I think they have something special there. Hopefully, down the road, they could you know make that into an actual like, television show rather than just web series. Yeah. That's awesome. What is uh, what is the digital media? What does that entail? So yeah, um, my background is in like social media and communication. So I've all and I've always been because I'm from Canada, right? So hockey is kind of a thing down here. Yeah. Um, so I've always been um, into like sports and uh, hockey, and uh, I basically um, study communications at, at Carleton University in uh, at Ottawa, which is the nation's capital of. Canada, basically, um, a lot of, it's like making social media content and um, online content for like, um, like Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, for like various like social media um, companies, athletes as well, um, and uh, yeah, I've been doing that for a while now, like Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, which is a big junior league in Canada, I've been doing their social media for four years, I've been working with a few um, athletes as well, and then um, doing my writing as well. I'm known as a writer, so I write for I write like for Sports Illustrated, the NHL section, about kind of the digital media, social media thing. It's kind of my thing. It's kind of my background, so I do that as well. Cool, cool. What uh, what what's uh, what's one of your favorite uh, clients that you work for? Uh, I have a few. I mean, um, I I really liked working with. Uh, Trish and Katie, um, that was a lot of fun. Um, I've done a lot of work, like a lot of the stuff I've done in the hockey world has been a lot of, uh, has been pretty fun for me. Like the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, I've done a little bit of work as well with um, specific, like uh, with uh, like the CCHL here in Ottawa, and I've uh, I've done a lot of writing as well, like. For the National Hockey League Players Association, but I I enjoy working with um, uh, like actors and so uh, actors specifically, and I'm also working with a few wrestlers right now. Um, cool. JTG, who's actually you guys wrestling fans? Uh back in the day, not not in any reason. So like when I was a kid, like uh, I grew up I, in the '90s, so like I'm saying my twenties. Even in my twenties, I liked yeah. it. Yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm 26 now, so I've been watching it all my. Uh, I've been watching it since I was like five or six years old. My dad started me young. <laughs> I was never allowed to watch it growing up. Why? No. Even though it was fake violence, it was, it was... still too uh, realistic, I mm. suppose. I mean, with me, it was the type of thing where it was just it was on in the background. Yeah. And I don't know what the conversations were between my mom and my dad, but. <laughs> It wasn't getting turned off. <laughs> <laughs> my mom so had a heart attack when my dad had caught her. What's that? I, I, I said, think I'd, I, you know what, five or six, that's a little too intense. I'd say like <laughs> eight or nine, I yeah. started watching it. But it's still a young age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
True, true. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that's what I've been doing. And one thing I've been doing, that's how I kind of got in contact with you guys, because that hashtag Potter Family is such a cool, amazing hashtag. It, it, it brings is. everyone together. Is I do a podcast myself. I do pop turnitives. So yes. um, that takes up a lot of my time. You guys know that doing a podcast, even though we all have day jobs, you know, we put our passion and then everything into these things. And yeah. We want to do as much as we can with them. You know what I mean? A, a lot, lot of my you friends. You guys have a great show. Thanks, bro. So, like, Thank you. A lot of my friends say they laugh. They're like, yeah, Rob just comes to work to plug his show. That's pretty much <laughs> all I talk about at work. Like, <laughs> Well, you got to be in. Like, I always say, man, you have to do it with passion or don't do it at all. If you're not into what you're doing and you're not in a situation where you don't want to talk about it every day, 24-7, like, I don't think you're doing it right. You know yeah. what I mean? You got to be all in with something, no? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. What do you do on your show, uh, Peter? Do you do a different topic every show? Or? So, yeah, pretty much. I mean, depending on... So, the thing, too, is, like, I'm not... Um, I my, my background is sports, but I've always been just, like, a pop culture guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought you guys had a... Uh, uh, like a like a horror movie or horror film guest on your show tonight. Uh, we had a, a horror illustrator tonight. Yeah, illustrator. Yeah. So yeah. Like, for example, like I'm I'm a huge horror movie fan. You know what I mean? Like ever since growing up, I used to always be into that. I've always been like a pop culture guy. So my show, depending on who I get on, um, it's just like conversations about you know. Um, pop culture, okay. um, sports, social media based too. So I'll ask like athletes or I'll ask uh, actors about how they use social media because I have a background on that. So I just want to know, pick their brains a little, kind of get into the behind the scenes aspect. I kind of want, I mean, I've, I, so I've seen your show before and what I like about it is you kind of have those kind of behind the scenes conversations with a lot of the people you have on. Yeah. So you've had a few episodes where you've had the like, comedians on, right? Yeah. And they're kind of telling stories about like, their past experiences and like you can't really get those anywhere else but on the Robin Slim show you know what I mean yeah so see, like, I like that I don't I don't want to ask somebody to do their do, don't you know I don't want to ask somebody to do their act I want to talk to them and find out why they're interesting or funny as a person like yeah I mean like in the sport like in, in the sports side of things like don't get me wrong but the episodes where people are like like analyzing breaking down sports and performances in the actual game they're fine, but there's so many of them. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah. There's so many of them. So I wanted to make a platform that's like behind the scenes what they won't get. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So we've had, and I've been blessed, man, to have unbelievable guests on my show. You like, have. I mean, I've seen some of your guests, bro. You got some it's great been crazy. People. Like, I've had a couple guys who are on Trailer Park Boys um, come on my show. That's um, awesome. Yeah, do you guys watch that or know about that show? I've never gotten into it. My friend it, Jeremy wants me to watch it, but he right. said it's like it's a, it's a long series, right? Oh yeah, there's like eleven seasons. Yeah, or something and from like what that. he's explained, like everyone got me. It tickles my soul. Like it sounds really <laughs> funny, but I, they are they're they're great. I just don't have time, man. <laughs> it's there. There's so much content out there, and you know what? We're doing a di- like I'm doing a disservice. Like everyone asks me, oh, Peter Beats. Like, we want to do kind of what you do, you know what I mean? Like, what, how can we get started? And I feel like I'm dooming us all by saying start a podcast. We have to have a freaking podcast in the queue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like there's so much content out there. Yeah. And uh, it's tough to put it all in. I mean, I just had, um, I'm ta- I taped a really cool episode with uh, Michael Price. He's, he's an executive producer and writer of The Simpsons. And yeah. he's one of the co-creators of F is for Family with Bill Burr. Yes. Season 2 comes out on Netflix yeah. on next Tuesday. So I oh. talked to him about that. He's like, it's ridiculous how much content. It's like, you, there's, it's impossible to keep up. And it's impossible to know about everything. Yeah. Even though we think we have access to everything with social media, you're yeah. going to miss a bunch of stuff easily. Yep. Dude, there's stuff from, like, five years ago that, like, I'll message a friend, like, have you seen this? And they're like, no, like, it's cool that something's always new. One of my friends at work, like, uh, a few months ago asked me if I ever saw, who's that guy, Kai? The guy that, the hitchhiker. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just found this guy. I'm like, dude, this guy was huge news years ago, man. Like, yeah, yeah, like, it's crazy how people find stuff that just, they never came across. There's so much stuff out there. I don't know if you stand, like, I love discovering things on YouTube or like social media, like memes or gifts. And then like I show someone and they're like, 
Oh yeah, man, that's from like three, four years ago, and I'm like, I don't care. It's still freaking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. What? What like, is? Get, get off my back. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's funny. What, Peter? What do you think the key to social social media is? Like, I just kind of just blew up on there. I, I don't don't even know how. Yeah, you guys have a, a pretty big following on there. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I think it has to do with. I mean, like. Why do you guys go to your favorite restaurant? Because the food's good, right? Yeah, right. I, I Same agree. thing with social media, right? We're going to keep coming because the content's good. If the content's not good, yeah. like, people aren't going to show up, right? Yeah. So you got to kind of have, you got to kind of lure in the bait and have something in there that um, gets them engaged, that makes them want to click on things, whether it's, you know, funny visuals, funny content in terms of, um, like, the certain... Um, language in a post or something that's really going to kind of capture um, um, their attention is, is really important. You know, visual is huge. Instagram, we live in a visual world and society now, so that's important. I think being consistent is good, too, and what I mean by that, guys, is like, um, you know, uh, the type of content you post, having like a, a voice that's kind of consistent and remains the same. So, for example, on Poptornative, we don't get as crazy and quirky as they do on, uh, on the the Robin Slim show, even though I've had some pretty big laughs. I don't think we've ever <laughs> had some, some of the stuff that you guys talk about. <laughs> but but uh, um, it's like, for example, you also want your content that you post on social media to kind of reflect what you like, what kind of stuff you talk about on the show too, right? right. It's got to go hand in hand. Yeah, just be yourself. Exactly, be yourself and... You know, uh, have some fun. I think that's all what, it, what it's all about right now. And cool. I think people love coming on the show. I think people love talking about themselves. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. I am a complete narcissist. narcissist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know. But you know, we just live in, like, we definitely live in, like, a visual and, like, audio world where people love to, like, have conversations. People love to listen to conversations. And people love to just, like, Look at photos, look at videos. It's huge right now. It's I huge. feel like, too, like nobody really has conversations. Like, everybody's just texting. Like, people want to hear a conversation, like you yeah. said. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the problem. Well, not a problem. My show is like, my show is basically literally just like a one on one interview, right? Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of shows out there that have guests, but it's like half and half. Like, the first like 45 minutes is just them talking, and then they have their guests. Like, like our mutual friends in J the Just In Time podcast, right? Yeah. Like, they've been starting to have guests on their show. But, like, their first, like, 45 minutes is, like, no guests, right? It's just them talking. And then they bring in a guest for the second half. My issue is, like, it's just uh, when I have, like, a one-on-one, -on -one, it's just me and that person for the whole episode. So there's not as much, like, like casual, like, flow going on, like, on your show. Yeah. Where... Hey, where's the guy? Is the guy who does that Homer Simpson impression? You see there? No, he was uh, he was a uh, one-time live guest. He was uh, oh who man, was that Buddha. Was, oh, is Buddha. that a thing? Is that like a, is Homer Simpson impression? Like, is he known for that? Yeah, dude, he I does like so. hey, he does all sorts of yeah, all he sorts does of impressions. Like amazing. Because I'm telling you, man, that's like that's spot on, eh? Oh, it's like, great. That's like that like that's unbelievable. His impression. Of Homer. <laughs> we we <laughs> were cracking up because there was a part where we were talking to to I was it the um. The two girls. Katie and Trish. Katie yeah, and we're Trish. 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 She said that sounds like Homer. Yeah. He's like, wait, I never heard that. <laughs> As he, he, was, talked. He, actually, he was actually hilarious on that, man. Like, I, he was honestly, great. if you ever have a chance to get him back on, oh, like, he's he great. was so funny. He was, he was awesome, man. Yeah, he said he's coming back soon. He, he messaged me a few he, weeks ago. He does an amazing. So, uh, so, I, I, so I just want to say, it Buddha. It's like it's you. It's like Robin Slim, and then you kind of have like co-hosts, co-guests come on. Is yeah, that it is? we do. Uh, we always have uh, interns, and we got a new intern, Amanda, and we have live guests that come in. They sit in like a fourth mic type of thing. Like we always. <laughs> what we always what happened like to the intern that you were trying to make dead? That we were what? That <laughs> was we were trying to kill him. <laughs> He left. I he... watched that whole episode with Katie and Trish, and this shit is a random part where you're trying to make your intern dance. 
Oh, the medicines. Oh, okay. Yeah. And bus, the bus pills. pills. That was slim. He wouldn't take the bus pills. I still have bus pills if anybody ever yeah, wants. I think, slam, I think you were trying to offer no, them to the Slambo. There's just no, like, what was the name of your intern? That you Slamborghini. Had on when Katie and Fish was there. Slamborghini. The, the Slamborghini. Yeah, so there was, a, there was this random time where you just, like, I think it was Rob just goes, like, hey, man, Joe, let's start dancing. And he's like, no, I don't want to dance. It's so like that. It was just like, I just found it really funny. I don't actually even remember that. I don't either. I... <laughs> I love that I just brought up a moment that made me laugh. And you guys are like, I don't know what the hell this guy is. I don't, I don't remember. I can't remember I'm... guests. Rob will, like, we'll have guests multiple times. I'll see the name and I'm like, oh, have we talked to that person before? I have no clue. I don't remember any yeah, of the it's conversation. Like, I have a very I'm good a good memory, intern. And I'll I would have danced. at my work and I'll be like, man, remember that? Like two years ago, he's like, PD Beats. I don't even freaking remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's me. Like, people are like, yeah, that's funny that you said that. I'm like, I don't even remember saying that, bro. That's scary. <laughs> I know. It's, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, I, I have a pretty good memory, so it, it's something that uh, is important. And I use it, I actually use it as an asset on my show, too, though, because, like, yeah. it shows that I'm well, like, prepared. So I'll mention yeah. a show, like, so I have like Charles Baker come on my show, and he was a Skinny Pete in Breaking Bad. Did you guys watch Breaking Bad? Yeah, yeah, I was a huge fan of Breaking Bad. He was Skinny yeah, Pete. Yeah, so he was Skinny Pete. That's awesome. He was one of Je uh, Jesse. He was one of the uh, Jesse's friends. Yeah, it was Skinny Pete and Beaver. I think was the other one. Yeah, Badger. Badger, Badger. That's what it was. Yeah. So um, it was funny because like I told you, like I'm a big horror movie guy, and I like a lot of, like the small like B like the happy B rated yeah. horror movies that like not a lot of people know about, right? Yeah. And there's like a movie called Splinter, which if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you watch it because right. it's actually a really good movie. I don't know if you ever saw like Road Trip. Have you ever seen that movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, it has the guy. It has great. El in it, the guy who is like the. Who, like the smart, like the really smart guy that like ended up uh, uh, finding out uh, a way to uh, make marijuana like non detectable at the end. Okay. Like there's one of the guys that they were with. He's in it, so that's why like it's like a small little movie called Splinter, and then Skinny Pete's in it as well. And I mentioned it to him, and he's like, "Oh my god, I had no idea people knew about that movie." <laughs> We had a DJ on once like that. Like I, I forget. It was uh, Vince. What was his name? Uh, Vince Porter with Steve the slap Porter? chop. Steve, Steve Porter. Porter. Yeah, yeah. DJ, I had DJ Steve Porter, and I liked one of his things with um. Oh my God, who was it? Uh, Fred. Fred Willard. He made this little clip called Fred X, and for, like I, I mentioned it. He's like, yeah, nobody, nobody ever mentions that. Like I just love that that little video he made. Okay, so Fred Willard hosted a show called, like, Obsessed. Have you ever seen that show? No, oh, wow. but I love Fred Willard. He did Willard. a show where he was documenting people that had, like, insane obsessions with oh, things. Amazing. So, like, one guy would be like, hi, my name is Chris. I'm obsessed with Pac-Man. <laughs> and he's just like, like hi, I'm Chris. I'm, I'm obsessed with blueberry cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Screw Dr. Dr. Chocula. Like, it was like... <laughs> It's actually insane. I think I know what show you're talking about, and there was also a girl who was obsessed with the Ninja Turtles, and she had yeah. like a mask and everything, and she did she took like kung fu lessons in her costume <laughs> in full mascot oh, gear. Oh, that is amazing. We need to interview her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She she literally bought more like the actual head from one of the movies yeah and her parents and are like why cost... are you like thirty thousand dollars in debt <laughs> it costed her like yeah I it was like insane and but then there's, so, there's like one episode where it was like hi my name is mike i'm obsessed with my little pony the guy has like like 200 like 255 different like my little pony stuffed animals in his room or something it's just like it's crazy. The wow. most surprising, really the most surprising thing to me was that the Pac-Man guy had a wife. Oh yeah, he oh, was Pac-Man guy. Like, someone actually cared him about him. Like, he, he was packing. The best, the best part is when they show him going to like the local pizzeria, 
and he sees the Pac-Man machine. He's like, Pac-Man! Yeah, and, and then, then he goes and he's like, I need a quarter. And he comes to the people and he's like, can I have a quarter, please? And they're like, yeah, you're going to make sure our machine doesn't go for the wall this time. <laughs> <laughs> and then they interview <laughs> those people got, and they're like, well. And he got mad and he pushed it. For the, oh, man, that show is crazy. They're all on YouTube, by the way, if you want to watch <laughs> that's, a, that's, I think, where I saw them in the first I got to see these. Yeah. Obsessed is called with Fred Willard. <laughs> with Fred Willard. Yeah. And the guy was obsessed with, because, like, I'm from Canada. We don't have, like, like you guys have blueberry cereal, right? Yeah. 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 I don't have it in Canada, but that's the best episode where the guy is, like, because they don't make it a lot. So the guy's going store to store and has to drive, like, 30 <laughs> miles just to get blueberry cereal. And he's going in certain aisles of the store. And he's trying to, like, take all the cow chocolates and hide them and put blueberry in front of them in the aisles. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. We had a guy, uh, Jr., uh, a mutual friend of me and Rob, who, who we used to work with, uh, yeah. at, like in retail, who would just buy like fucking <laughs> cases of like the Count Chocula. <laughs> what did they have last? Yeah, last Halloween, I found they had Count Chocula cereal bars, dude. I was eating them by the box, like one sitting. And by the, the way, box. this person also had a wife. Just if you're wondering, <laughs> I, I have an ex-wife. <laughs> I don't have. I have an ex-wife. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, just like, yeah, yeah the Pac-Man one was insane. Like, it was just, he's just obsessed with Pac-Man. <laughs> and there's an E.T. one. But the, the E.T. one's kind of cool because he has, like, a whole E.T. room. And he charges, like, admission for tours. Oh, that's like, just hey, a scam. Really At like, least hey, he's doing something to support show. his habit. I'm totally right? I loved it, bro. <laughs> If you're going to be obsessed with something, do something to make right. money off Does of it. May, yeah, bank on that. Peter, now, yeah. he had like a, would, would you not go, like, he had a huge, like, E.T. room. Like, that's the coolest thing. That is cool. Peter, we have to wrap and this up, dude. Speaking of E.T., I have oh. to say this. Okay, this is an exclusive announcement. No one knows this. So, Robin, you guys are the first to know this. Nice. But, um... The, you've seen E.T., I hope, right? Or most of you. Yeah. Have seen that movie. Mm-hmm. So the girl who plays the mom, D. Wallace, she's coming on my podcast as a guest, which is like a big deal. Cool, dude. Yeah, That's awesome, nice. Man. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she was also like in a lot of like horror movies growing up too. Like she was in the original Hills Have Eyes. She was in a movie called The Howling. So it's going to be really cool to pick her brain about that. Because, man, I don't know, that's, like, two things about me, not people that many many people know about. Like, I'm a, I'm a huge, like, sports fan. But, like, two things people don't realize about me. One, I'm a huge wrestling fan. And when I mean huge, like, insanely huge. And then I'm a huge horror movie fan. Nice. Like, those are my two things that kind of, like, if you go on my social media, you would probably not know that I was a fan of those things. <laughs> Peter, we have to wrap this up, dude. Thank you so much for talking to us. Oh, man, no problem. I had a blast. Thank you guys so much for having me. No problem, man. We're I'm going to gonna... go watch Totally... I'm going to go watch Totally Obsessed now. <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> Where can everybody find you, bro? Uh, yeah, you could uh, you can follow me on, on my social media. Uh, it's at PD Beats. Um, and uh, yeah, you could do that uh, on Instagram and uh, on Twitter as well, PD Beats. Um, you could uh, check out Popternative on uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash Popternative, and then we're on SoundCloud and iTunes as well, Popternative, and uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, Popternative. So, yeah, absolutely. If you guys want to get in touch, please do. And thank you guys so much for having me on. Like, continue what you're doing. You guys are pretty hilarious. So oh, thank you, it's man. an honor for you guys to have me on your show. Thanks, brother. Have a good one. You too, guys. All the best. Bye. Later, bro.